Hi everybody, it is your AP Bio teacher, Mr. Poser. Today we are getting into one of the biggest topics of all of AP Biology, which is topic 3.5, photosynthesis. So we continue our third unit on cellular energetics by discussing probably the most important reaction of all living things that we know of, which is photosynthesis. And obviously it's more than just one reaction, but it's a very, very, you know, it's a pretty complicated series of reactions. Um, but if we really, really break it down into our like fifth grade definition of photosynthesis, what it really is, it's a process by which living things capture light energy, so electromagnetic radiation from the sun, and convert it into chemical energy stored in sugars and other organic molecules. So in our last video, we were just discussing how life is able to convert one form of energy into the next. So today we are going to get into the details, I mean the details, about how life converts light energy or electromagnetic radiation into chemical energy that is stored in bonds. Um, photosynthesis is crazy, crazy important because it nourishes almost every living thing on Earth um, either directly, you know, if you're a photosynthetic organism like a plant or cyanobacteria, or if you're an animal um, or a fungus, you are relying upon consuming other organisms like plants in order to get your energy. All right, and as I said before, life needs a constant input of energy, and so photosynthesis is oh so important uh, when it comes to living things. Maybe it's not important if you're living in a hydrothermal vent, if you're a, like a uh, Archean living in a hydrothermal vent at the bottom of the ocean. Maybe it's not as important, but still, you get my point. All right, uh, so let's talk about the origins of photosynthesis just a little bit. Uh, photosynthesis, first of all, three billion years ago. Um, so it's been a long time that photosynthesis has been happening for. In, uh, in prokaryotic cells called cyanobacteria, and cyanobacteria still exist today. Um, so it wasn't just eukaryotes with chloroplasts that are able to do photosynthesis. In fact, these prokaryotes that live in the ocean still today produce most of the oxygen uh, in the atmosphere. In fact, 80% of the oxygen that you are breathing comes from cyanobacteria in the ocean. So, you know, uh, we think of the Amazon as like the lungs of the world, right? Uh, which is, you know, we gotta save the Amazon, but most of the oxygen that we breathe actually comes from the ocean. Um, so it is believed that these cyanobacteria actually produce the oxygenated atmosphere once this process of photosynthesis evolved um, in the early Hadean um, period, which is, you know, a really, really long time ago. All right, it's over three billion years ago. Uh, so cyanobacteria, and if we're talking about eukaryotic uh, photosynthesis, we're talking about the endosymbiosis theory, how one cell swallowed up a cyanobacterium and is able to use the cyanobacterium to provide a glucose for itself. Um, and they were endosymbionts, right? So, but we don't have to talk about that again because we already did um, in this class. So if we really, really simplify uh, overall the process of photosynthesis, what really happens here if we put it into a chemical formula um, it's really that photosynthetic organisms like cyanobacteria and plants and algae are able to take in atmospheric carbon dioxide, so from the air, um, and use water and light, particularly, you know, visible light from the sun, to produce C6H12O6, which is glucose, and it produces oxygen as a byproduct. So really the goal of photosynthesis is to produce carbohydrates like glucose. And oxygen just so happens to be produced as a byproduct and, you know, cyanobacteria help make the atmosphere with this byproduct. Um, so let's get into the two main processes behind photosynthesis. And we can break them down into two categories here. One is called the light reactions, and the other is called the dark reactions or the Calvin cycle. All right, and these are two separate processes here. Um, the, light, the products of the light reaction are used to power the Calvin cycle, as I'm about to talk about here. All right, so what happens in the light reactions, just an overview, and we're going to get into specifics about the light reactions. Water, uh, so why, another reason why plants need water, water is split in order to provide electrons uh, for what, what's called photophosphorylation, um, which we're going to talk about in a minute here. Uh, chlorophyll, which is the green pigment that allows light to be absorbed, um, which we're going to talk about in a minute in photosystems, absorbs light, uh, transfers electrons to a molecule called NADP+, producing an energy-rich molecule, it's called a reducing agent, um, called NADPH, and in addition, the light reactions also produce ATP through photophosphorylation, as I mentioned before, um, and the light reactions of photosynthesis occur in the thylakoids of the chloroplast, so those little disc membrane disc structures that you can see 
um, inside a chloroplast, that is where the light reactions occur. Um, so these products of the light reactions, NADPH and ATP, are used in conjunction with carbon dioxide from the air in the Calvin cycle by the chloroplast. Um, so what basically happens here is that the Calvin cycle links a bunch of carbon dioxides together into, you know, glucose. Um, it takes a bunch of them together and it links them with the help of enzymes and with the help of energy from ATP and NADPH. Um, so it uses carbon dioxide in a process called carbon fixation in order to do that. Um, so And this Calvin cycle occurs in what we call the stroma or the fluid um, within a chloroplast. All right, so we should have talked about the thylakoids and the stroma um, in our last unit, um, talking about the structure of a chloroplast. All right, so we're going to talk about the light reaction. And here's, here's the diagram that we're going to be using. Uh, so let's label some stuff here first. All right, so we are within the chloroplast right now, um, if we're looking at this diagram. And as we can see, we have a membrane. I didn't draw the phospholipids this time. Uh, but we have a membrane, and this is actually a thylakoid membrane. So this is one of the membranes that surrounds one of those little discs within the chloroplast. So inside here, we're in the thylakoid, and outside here, we're in the stroma. Every other example that we've looked at so far, this is like, this is the inside of the cell, this is the outside of the cell. But no, we're within a chloroplast. We're on a very, very small level here. Um, and what we're looking at on the membrane are two big structures. Let me just drag my face here again. Two big structures called photosystems. We have photosystem 2 and photosystem 1. Um, we're going to talk about what these little purple dots are in just a minute. Um, but this structure over here is an enzyme that's responsible for producing the ATP. That's called ATP synthase. All right, so we're going to walk through a series of steps as to how photosynthesis works. And I think my face will be fine up here. All right, let's get into it. Uh, but before we do, uh, photosystems, we have to talk about those. So we have two uh, that we're talking about in this lesson here, photosystem two and photosystem one. And they are, as, I, as we just saw here, embedded in the thylakoid membrane. They have two components to them. They're protein complexes. They have what's called a reaction center complex, which is going to be passing an electron from one uh, portion to the next. And it has light harvesting complexes that contain chlorophyll that allow the absorption of light to happen. All right, so light harvesting complexes, as I said, contain the chlorophyll molecules. And chlorophyll is the pigment that absorbs certain wavelengths of light and reflects green light, and that's why plants are green, right? So um, here's another thing about chlorophyll. Chlorophyll absorbs photons, and a photon is a unit of light energy, um, and it absorbs a photon to excite one electron. To What does that mean that an electron ex is excited? Well, that just means that it has absorbed some energy and it is a, in a more unstable state. Um, so energy from the excited electron is passed from one molecule to another. All right, so the when light is absorbed by chlorophyll, it excites an electron and makes that electron unstable. And that energy from that electron can be passed from one thing to the next. And we're going to be seeing a lot of that in just a minute. Um, so when one molecule accepts an electron from another, I'm going to be using this word a lot. It's, we call that reduced. Okay, so if... Uh, you know, if one molecule is accepting an electron from another, that molecule is reduced. All right, uh, so let's get into it. Step one here of the light reactions. I don't know what happened to the title, whatever. Uh, number one, light reactions strike chlorophyll, or light strikes chlorophyll in photosystem two, and it excites an electron. So we get sunlight um, that enters into the chloroplast, and it puts an, and it puts an electron, which is E minus here, into a high energy unstable state okay so it's able so chlorophyll is able to absorb that light and excite an electron um, so what happens then is that an electron acceptor molecule within the photosystem 2 accepts the electron right so the, we've got the light harvesting part and the reaction center part and the reaction center is going to be accepting an electron uh, from chlorophyll all right so um, the electron is in a higher energy state once it light hit it, hits it, okay? Um, so here's the thing. Um, when light excites the electron, the electron gets transferred from the light harvesting complex or the light harvesting part of the photosystem, the chlorophyll, and gets passed to the reaction center part. But those electrons need to be replaced. So what does water, what purpose does water serve in plants? Well, water provides electrons. Um, and what these photosystems are able to do is they're able to split a water molecule. So we got two H2Os here. And what this uh, photosystem is able to do is split it up into its components, hydrogen 
and oxygen. All right, so it's able to borrow some of the electrons um, from water to replace the electrons that it lost that got excited by light. All right, so water molecules are split to replace electrons, releasing hydrogen ions and oxygen. Um, and there's our byproduct, right? So there, this is where this is why our atmosphere is here is because photosystem one and photosystem two split water to produce oxygen gas, and it's just a byproduct. Oxygen is not going to come back for this whole reaction, but these hydrogen ions are. We're going to talk about that in a minute. All right, so moving on to step four. Um, the electron that got excited and is in photosystem 2, the reaction center, gets passed from one protein to the next. Dun, 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 dun. And that's called an electron transport chain. And why is it so necessary that it has to be passed from one protein on the membrane to the next? Why, is it, why can't it just go directly from one to the next? Well, we're going to talk about that in just a second here. All right, we're going to take a look at another electron transport chain. Uh, once we discuss cellular respiration. But the point is here is that an electron from photosystem 2 is passed to photosystem 1. Um, and the excited electron, the energy from that excited electron is passed over um, through that, what we call the electron transport chain. Um, and here's the thing about that. W using the energy from that excited electron, each of those little tiny membrane proteins, these, uh, these purple blobs over here, what they're doing, they're called cytochromes, um, and what they do is they tend to pump um, hydrogen ions. Once they, you know, once this electron passes through, they pump, they pump hydrogen ions into the thylakoid, all right? And that establishes what we call a proton gradient. Um, so the energy is used to pump these hydrogen ions over here. And now we have a bunch of hydrogen ions on one side of the membrane and not many on the other. And that's what we call a proton gradient. So it's a type of electrochemical gradient. We talked about that in our last unit. Um, so we got a bunch of hydrogen ions on one side and not many on the other, and that's going to become very, very relevant later on. All right, so then light comes back into the picture once we have an excited or once we have an electron passed over to uh, photosystem one, light comes into the picture again, and the chlorophyll uh, takes that electron and it excites it, and then it's like, transferred once again to a light acceptor in the reaction center complex in photosystem one. So this electron gets excited once again. This process is happening over and over again. Well, not over and over again, just twice here. Um, but once that happens, it repeats this process of an electron transport chain. Um, so, you know, to simplify it, we don't have to put in all the different proteins. There's a protein called ferrodoxin um, that accepts some of these electrons, but we don't have to worry about that right now. Um, but all we have to know is that, yeah, so this happens again, light, is absorbed by the chlorophyll in photosystem one, passes that electron to another electron transport chain. And using that energy from that electron transport chain, instead of pumping more hydrogens and establishing a proton gradient, that energy is used um, with conjunction with an enzyme to reduce, it means to pass an electron to a molecule called NADP plus to produce a high energy reducing agent that's going to be very, very helpful for the Calvin cycle, which we'll talk about in a minute, called NADPH. So this is what we're really, really looking for. One of the products that we're really looking for when we're discussing the, uh, the light reactions. NADPH is super necessary for uh, the Calvin cycle to even function. Okay, so we, we made it. Hooray. This enzyme, it's called NADP plus reductase, um, is able to use that energy from the electron to produce NADPH. Um, and that last step, so remember that protein, proton gradient that we established? We pumped a bunch of hydrogen ions to one side of the membrane inside the thylakoid. Um, what we're able to do with that is a special molecule called ATP synthase, which we'll come back when we're discussing cellular respiration, is thus able to use the energy from that proton gradient. And, you know, those, these ions are just kind of passing through um, to the other side in order to produce ATP. So ATP synthase kind of functions as a, not only a channel protein, but it also functions as an enzyme. Um, so it's able to use a proton gradient. It's able to pass through, um, protons are able to pass through and it kind of powers the, uh, the enzyme a little bit and it allows ADP to become ATP. And if we haven't spoken about this before, ADP is what we call adenosine diphosphate. ATP is adenosine triphosphate. So basically what happens here um, is that the chloroplast is going to take some ADP and add one more phosphate group to it 
to make ATP, and that's this very, very high energy molecule. That's the, en that's the energy currency for a cell. Um, so yeah, it's able to use a proton gradient, take ADP, and produce ATP with that energy. All right, um, so the last part here, we don't have to discuss all the steps of the Calvin cycle, hooray, but what you do need to know about the Calvin cycle is that, my text is cut off here a little bit, um, the Calvin cycle uses the ATP that the light reactions produced as well as the NADPH that the light reactions produced um, in order to take a bunch of carbon dioxide to see what's happening here. Here's carbon dioxide and it's, you know, some energy is applied and some NADPH is applied and through a series of steps here, what is able to happen in the Calvin cycle in the stroma of the chloroplast is that we're able to link a bunch of these carbons together to form carbon uh, carbon dioxides together in order to form carbohydrates. So it's pretty sweet. Um, so as I said, yeah, it produces carbohydrates from fixed CO2. So it's able to take carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, link them together using the help from NADPH and ATP um, in order to produce that sugar. And that's what the whole process of photosynthesis is looking for. It's, or it's trying to produce carbohydrates. Whew, all right. Um, that is it for this video. Hopefully that was succinct enough and hopefully I didn't talk for too long. Um, if you're confused about this, please go through and watch it again. I will be providing more, uh, more tools for us to practice with this, uh, this light reactions process um, later on. So please let me know if you have any questions. We'll see you next time. Bye.